Hey, I'm Ethan with GoBuilda, and today I'm going to be walking you guys through some tips and tricks for using our new 100mm 3606 series mechanum wheels. So, mechanum wheels are always an interesting beast. They allow you a little more flexibility when driving robots around, and generally you'll use four or sometimes eight on your project, depending on how large of a scale you're doing. So, running them on a drivetrain allows you a lot more flexibility in how you drive especially when compared to something like a four-wheel drive that'll have standard traction or omni wheels. Something like this with standard tractions or omnis will allow you to drive forward and backward just fine and turn left and right. You can do all these things with mechanisms as well. Then where you get start getting interesting is where you add other vectors. So the vectored 45 degree bearing supported rollers will allow you to move both left and right in addition to forward and diagonals as well. So if I was trying to move this robot to my right in this direction, I would run this wheel toward the center and this wheel also toward the center. So they're moving in opposite directions. Then on the left side, I will move those wheels outward. So this guy will spin away from the center of the robot and this one will also do the same. So you have a nice pushing force. This gives you all four of those motors worth of power in each of those forward backward and directly side to side movements. You can also do diagonal movements. If I was trying to move forward and to the right, I would move this wheel forward and this wheel forward. So you have a nice 45 degree angle this way, assuming you're giving the same amount of speed to each motor. Likewise, you can run those backwards to move backward and to the left. And if you're trying to move forward to the left, move these two in this direction. Another important thing to keep in mind is the orientation of your mechanical wheels. You want that, those rollers to form an X from the top. So each roller will want to face toward the center. So this guy is kind of angled toward the center individually. Then on the bottom, this will also form an, kind of an O shape where none of the rollers are facing the center. Each orientation is technically will um, provide a lot of the same amount of forces, but when having your O shape on top, you start to rotate a lot easier. This doesn't often equate to actually rotating easier in a controlled environment, um, but it means other robots on a possible playing field, or even when just strafing normally, you're a lot more likely to accidentally rotate. Having them in this orientation means you have a lot more controllability and when you want to turn you can turn very well. Another thing to always keep in mind with mechanic wheels is that they're more picky about center of gravity than a lot of other drivetrains. So your vertical center of gravity or your center of gravity is up and down is always important because it'll keep your robot very stable. The lower you can get it the better for sure. So mounting things like a battery and drivetrain motors lower help a lot. Then center of gravity relative to this axis of the robot frame will also impact strafing performance especially. So strafing is when you're moving side to side or at diagonals. Moving a lot of weight back to the back of the robot will strafe in something like an arc like this, which is oftentimes not preferable because you're trying to get very straight movements. This can sometimes be corrected with software and some sensors, but the closer you can get all of your weights to the center of your robot, the better. This can also mean having two weights that are equal distant from the center, and oftentimes just making sure everything is very balanced. Moving outside of the control realm, if you guys have any questions, I always like to refer back to the great product insight on the 3606 series mechanical wheel page. That'll show the direction each wheel needs to spin to move your robot in different directions. I like to look at that when I'm programming stuff and just generally referencing orientation of mechanical wheels. It always helps me a lot. Next up. If you need to disassemble your mechanical wheels, this may be to dial your rollers like you saw in our last video, or in general, just to go through and take those rollers off and perform maintenance or whatever you need. I'll kind of walk you through the, those steps here. So 
On this side of the mechanical wheel, you'll have an aluminum plate. This keeps everything super light. Then you'll have a plastic core that will mount hubs and other components. And you'll have another aluminum plate on the other side, kind of sandwiching those rollers. So the first step before I start disassembling a mechanical wheel is since you have four on pattern holes here, these will be a 32 millimeter grid and nine rollers, those two numbers don't like playing with each other very well. So there's really only one orientation where these two plates work together. So you'll want to mark that orientation. I like to use masking tape. You can use something like an erasable marker or whatever floats your boat. So mark one side of one plate, then grab another piece of tape and on the exact reverse side, mark the opposite. So you can reference those two pieces of tape and say, okay, these plates need to be in this orientation. Next up, you'll grab a seven millimeter wrench or a driver as well, which works very good, and a three millimeter driver. It's because you have your four millimeter, 55 mil long screws, and you should be able to pull those guys out. There we go. When you thread them out, there will be a fairly tight fit between the plastic and the aluminum. So you'll want to make sure you get that, um, that screw just below the face of the two mil aluminum plate there. Then you'll repeat that process on the other three screws. And like, just like before, the fitment will probably keep those screws in place, but feel free to remove them as well. Deciding which plate to remove is fairly simple for me. I almost always like removing the plate that holds the lock nuts. This means I don't have to remove each screw entirely, and it means the hub inside the wheel, that plastic hub, will also stay in place, which is always really nice because you can kind of eliminate things you have to do later on. So there we go. Want to get those screws right underneath the bottom of that aluminum plate. Next, you'll have nine M3 lock nuts. You can see them over here. I've removed seven of those already to make this a little faster. Those will use a five and a half mil driver. So you can use a hand driver, a crescent wrench, or my personal favorite, a driver on a drill. That makes everything a little faster. So I have those guys removed here. And here's where things can kind of get a little tricky you'll want to rotate this in line with the way your, your rollers are generally trying to rotate, if that makes sense. So in this case, I want to move it clockwise and I wanna just rotate that and pull it out a little bit, gently a little bit at a time. I always like to do this over a space that's fairly clean because it's very possible you'll lose a few shims in this process. So. Now I have this plate off and you can see, it looks like I only lost one of these this time. So this is a very small shim. It'll have a filleted side and a flat side. This is generally very, very small. There's a very small difference between the two sides. There'll be one of these on each of the rollers. This will go in between the inner race of the bearing, which is the part of the bearing that needs to spin, and the plate. This means you can tighten down on those screws a lot better. And the only thing that'll contact the outer place plate will be that shim. That shim will only contact the inner race of the bearing. So you get a very nice and smooth bearing run on those bearings, and it makes everything a lot nicer. That being said, it's very important to keep track of these guys and put them back in place because if you don't have those shims, you'll get a lot more friction because the outer race and the roller itself can contact the outer plate in this assembly. So here's where you can take off, take each of these rollers out. Then you'll be able to remove those bearings and dye your rollers or do whatever you think you need to do. Then drop those rollers back into place once you're done. Take that washer that we talked about a little bit earlier, that shim, excuse me. And I like to put the filleted side, the smoother side toward the bearing. This likely isn't super important, but it's always a nice thing to keep in mind because it may have more of an impact depending on how aggressive that fillet is. So here's where we need to go back to using those tape marks as references. I found the tape mark on this side and the tape on this plate, and I want to line them up fairly well. So you can see in this case, 
everything will be shifted a little bit off. So I want to rotate it directly over the pieces of thread. There we have the thread plates. And start by putting one hole onto that piece of threaded rod. Then go to the next hole and kind of work your way around the wheel, flexing those rollers into place and making everything nice and aligned. Here I also like to check that everything has those nice little shims and will line up right. Once you get enough of these ro rollers lined up, it should all kind of snap into place. And here's where I like to replace those M4 lock nuts and screws. So I'll grab my three mil driver again, grab my seven mil wrench and tighten these back into place. Go and kind of do about the reverse process. Once you're done with all four of these guys, you should be good to go. Remember not to over tighten those quite as much. Um, you can tell if they're over tightened if you're starting to impact the roller performance, and, but generally you should be pretty good to go after that point. Remember, if you guys have any questions, especially on the cannon wheels, to shoot us an email at tech at gobilda.com. We're always happy to help. Thank you guys for watching.